Okay, good morning everyone. And uh, very welcome to this... Uh, uh, sorry, can you close the door please? Um, so good morning everyone and very welcome to this uh, second day of the international workshop on financial system architecture and, and stability. Uh, we had a, um, an intense day yesterday with a combination of uh, uh, presentation of academic papers, uh, uh, but also um, a first keynote uh, speech uh, um, with uh, Manu Jose, um, Jose Manuel Campa, so from the uh, European Banking Authority. And then in the late afternoon, a, a policy panel with quite different views about the, the state of uh, um, uh, the EU, let me say, regulatory framework <laughs> um, uh, and its capacity to, uh, to face and prepare for um, uh, future crises. <clears throat> this morning we have uh, um, another keynote and I'm extremely pleased to have uh, um, Javier Vives. He um, is a professor of economics and, vi and finance at the uh, ES Business School and is the director of the banking initiative uh, within the school. Um, he has a, a long career with uh, um, a long list of uh, publications in peer review journal, but also a lot of experience uh, in advising uh, policy makers. Without further ado, I'll give the floor, the screen, let me say to uh, Javier. Many thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for, uh, uh, for inviting me and um, apologies for not being able to be present physically uh, in Brussels. I'm sorry I missed uh, the program, which looks uh, very interesting from, from what you said um, uh, just now. Okay, so let me uh, share the screen uh, so that... Um, So you see it? Yes, very well. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, so I um, I, I'm going to uh, talk about the recent banking turmoil. Uh, uh, in a sense, uh, what is new, what is old, and and what lessons uh, we can uh, draw from it. Um, it will be mostly centered uh, in the U.S. And, and the reason uh, is that, um, uh, well, the turmoil has been there, except for the credit suisse, which is not a minor thing, but, uh, uh, but uh, for a range of banks, the turmoil was in the US. Okay, so I, I would like uh, first to start with what's new. Uh, then, uh, well, uh, on uh, digital banking and, and social media and its relation to deposit stickiness, which is uh, what uh, is new, in fact, uh, in this um, recent uh, bank turmoil. Um, on the response, the policy response, mostly the US, also Switzerland, and I'll say something about the European Union, but not much. And then I would try to know uh, some lessons uh, for uh, regulation uh, and supervision. So let, let me start just by reminding that uh, at, um, at DSA, I have uh, coordinated for a while a series of reports precisely on those issues. So I will draw on those reports. And so these are uh, the five uh, reports that we have um, uh, published uh, with CPR uh, up to now. Uh, and in fact, the, the next report will be precisely on the topic of the recent uh, bank uh, turmoil and and whether regulation and supervision are uh, adequate or not, or, or whether uh, new uh, policy measures uh, should be taken. Uh, all the reports are available at the website of the Banking Division. Okay, so uh, what is new in the crisis and why are banks uh, fragile? So let me just review quickly. Um, uh, in, in a very schematic way, uh, why are banks fragile? So here we have a uh, you want a diagram uh, where um, we have uh, three main factors uh, which impinge upon here what I call the degree of strategic complementarity of the action of investors or depositors, 
uh, which are basically the degree of co-movement uh, of its actions, uh, and which are uh, determined by the balance sheet structure of the inventory, uh, the, the short-term leverage, uh, the liquidity ratio, uh, and other uh, parameters of the balance sheet, by market stress indicators like the competitive pressure, for example, to uh, obtain deposits or fire sales penalties uh, when uh, you have to liquidate part of the portfolio, like now exactly uh, has happened uh, in the US uh, with the losses uh, when uh, uh, the Silicon Valley Bank and others had to liquidate um, the bond portfolios at a loss. And then finally, also information parameters and transparency, like for example, um, uh, public signals uh, in the uh, in the previous uh, crisis, in the global financial crisis, uh, it was crucial uh, the price of the certain uh, derivatives, uh, derivative indices, indices uh, of um, subprime mortgages uh, securities which gave an early alert that something was wrong. And in fact, that served as a coordinating device for a run that happened on a structured investment vehicles uh, at this point. Information has been very important in the current uh, turmoil, as, as also I will, uh, and information dynamics, uh, as I will explain uh, now, on uh, uh, impinging upon this uh, degree of strategic complementarity, uh, when when it's large, uh, this degree of strategic complementarity, there may be multiple equilibria uh, which impinge on fragility. And in fact, also uh, it may happen that the small changes on parameters have large effects. Okay, so one of the um, uh, factors is the competitive pressure, in particular for funding uh, in, in banks. Uh, and so, uh, it, just a reminder that uh, competition for deposits and systemic fees are linked um, uh, because the instability of a bank may steal over uh, to other banks via competition for deposits. Okay, so typically, then, in uh, when uh, a bank is in financial uh, distress, uh, the demand for insured deposits goes down, not for insured ones, uh, because the insurance is credible. Uh, and then this distressed bank uh, offers high deposit rates, in particular when the deposit is not on, uh, no, their deposit carrier, but the rival bank have also to offer higher rates to compete with the distressed bank. So this in turn raises the distress probability of the rival bank. Uh, in the past crisis, for example, in, in Spain, the bank that gave um, better uh, deposit rates was the Banco Espiritu Santo from Portugal, which subsequently failed. And in fact, the Bank of Spain and the Bank of Portugal were so worried that that said that other banks could not match uh, or should not match uh, this um, deep for to increase the, the remuneration of people. Um, so that there are papers uh, that test uh, this contagion and, and this systemic expectation of contagion uh, with banks linked to competition for a pool of deposits. Uh, and uh, this Egan et al. paper, uh, there's a, a model which, uh, which I can work a uh, long time ago uh, with US bank data, and, uh, uh, and it uh, provides a, a quite interesting analysis, just as an example, uh, also in the period of the uh, global financial crisis. Okay. Now, le 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 let's go to the uh, Silicon Valley uh, bank drawing. Uh, so, this is like a little bit with the timeline of what happened to Silicon Valley Bank. So we don't have to look at everything because there is many things happen, but, but just let's look at the beginning. On March 8th, the Silicon Valley Bank uh, sold uh, 21 billion worth of securities at a loss of almost two billion. Okay. Then they tried to patch this by raising capital and they had trouble uh, raising capital. Uh, the next day, uh, the shares plummeted by 40%, more than 40%, uh, more than 40 uh, and also a lot of the market value uh, of not only Silicon Valley Bank, but this, there was contagion uh, to other uh, major banks. And the next day, the bank uh, collapsed. This triggered a crisis of some regional banks, 
uh, trigger the response uh, of the of the Fed, launching the bank term uh, funding program, uh, which lend money uh, to banks uh, with collateral value at par, which is something uh, remarkable. Um, and well, uh, there were problems at Signature Bank uh, and, and other banks, uh, Biden uh, and Yellen and, and all the authorities at the Fed. Uh, make declarations to assure that deposit was sure, more or less with implicit uh, full uh, uh, deposit uh, insurance. Now, let, let us concentrate on the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank um, uh, in, the, in the crucial uh, days, no March 9, 10. Uh, in 10, the bank and the March 9 the bank was shut down, uh, but March 9, the, uh, as I said, then the, the no, no, not only was there then the decline, the big decline of the stock market, uh, which served precisely the decline in the price as a rolling point uh, to coordinate this run of deposit. Uh, but the customers would do, uh, no, uh, for people build up from their accounts. But also there was a, a important uh, future exposure um, of this uh, of this fact. And one of the uh, reasons of this extremely fast run um, is that um, uh, the deposits were they were large uh, on insured deposits, very large on insured deposits, the majority of the deposits by, uh, by very far. And, uh, uh, and the community of, uh, um, of VC, uh, of venture capital uh, investors and depositors who were uh, in this bank was really very close and they were quite connected. Okay, so that this is spread uh, very quickly um, through social media or just by uh, email or, or by just personal phone. But the run was quite important. The previous uh, largest bank run uh, in 2008 uh, was Washington Mutual, and then in 10 days, there was a withdrawal of almost uh, 17 billion. In one day, uh, Silicon Valley, uh, the withdrawal uh, from the of the deposit was 42 billion. Okay, so so this is quite uh, uh, quite a rare. And then obviously the question is uh, uh, we were thinking in banking uh, that deposits uh, were sticky, uh, but are they sticky? Well, those deposits uh, being those large and insured deposits uh, uh, in the modern electronic banking and also connected uh, with social media, they do not seem very sticky. Um, if we look at Twitter and the stock price of the of SDB, uh, we see here that the stock price and how it started you not know, fell when it had trouble, it fell a lot. And then Twitter activity uh, started uh, later. So the gray is vertical line is March 9th at uh, 9 in the morning. Um, and the red ones, which are the lead tweets, uh, uh, they they put the the ticker, so this is this is, uh, uh, this is driven uh, by the investors in the bank, and then they, they are just the tweets uh, FDB, these are general tweets. Okay, so you see how it, uh, it grows, and then grows tremendously uh, post uh, when post failure and the uh, These are the tweets uh, from the startup community, uh, which are. Basically the same, but you see uh, interestingly here that the peak of tweets is basically about uh, SDB, uh, not so much uh, about the investors in the bank, but because these are the guys that had the money. The bank. Okay, so these were the uh, these were the investors. Okay, so these tweets definitely uh, fostered uh, panic. You know, for example, this guy Jason Calacanis uh, was a venture capitalist and the popular tech podcast. Uh, it basically pushed a, a lot. Uh, uh, the panic, this was March 12th, so it was post uh, mortem. And uh, so some people think that all this also was done to assure uh, that no one would lose money and that the authorities uh, would uh, intervene to make full uh, depositors in this bank and also in In any case, what's clear um, is that Twitter activity amplified the negative effect of balance sheets. So, so banks that had more exposure uh, to Twitter, and these are in general, not only, you know, these are not the banks of Fed, but the general, all banks, 
uh, that the modus folder uh, the user uh, was to three percent more stock value uh, in the in those two shoulders. Okay, so this is the ones that did not have uh, mosquito folder, which also obviously there was rotation, but the major rotation uh, uh, was for bank uh, that had two years. Okay, so um What should we um, think of that? Uh, what connection it has uh, with the eruption you know, of digital banking um, and, and how we have to think about the stability of the project? Uh, these are uh, the number of branches uh, to deposit uh, in the US uh, from uh, 2010. You see that the number of uh, deposits, uh, the amount of deposits, the total deposits have grown a lot. In fact, they grew also a lot uh, uh, because of COVID, because also of the health, etc. And the people did not uh, expect so much to the UC. But at the number of branches, uh, because of digitalization, has gone down uh, quite a bit, more or less, is not happening. Uh, if we look at the specifically at the branch density of banks that fail, okay, that to say the, you know, the branches that are of a total uh, deposit. Uh, we see already uh, Silicon Valley Bank that has uh, not many uh, branches, and the others that failed uh, uh, well, have been reducing uh, branches uh, quite a bit. It's not that if you reduce branches, you fail, it, it is rather uh, that a, a lower branch density reflects uh, the type of clientele you have. Okay? And which are uh, related, more related to large uninsured deposits uh, from corporations and tech uh, savvy households uh, that can uh, use you know, uh, electronic banking to move funds uh, very quickly, and that they will do it, um, uh, among other things, because they have large uninsured deposits. Uh, so the findings uh, then of the related world. Uh, that this digital banking allows uh, those low branch density banks to grow, in fact, because they grow just in digital deposits, also uh, attract uninsured deposits. But then uh, the problem is that when interest rates increase, as it happened uh, recently, and economic conditions worsen, like, for example, when you got a little bit of venture capital, those large deposits people change source, and they change source as quickly as they went in, they go out. Okay, and in fact, uh, banks that make large investments in IT had lower branch density in 2022 and lower stock return around the 10 years of SDB uh, uh, for first quarter. Okay, and during the first quarter, banks with low branch density, so of a large withdrawal of mostly uh, financial deposits. And uh, here, uh, there are jobs uh, slides which are exactly. Uh, all the three things I have mentioned, so uh, let's go uh, over. The interesting thing is that precisely uh, the, um, uh, the the banks that were not uh, had more branches, so in, in a sense, uh, this can be taken as a problem that less digital uh, depositors, then they did better post price. Okay, so that's to say they did not have so many uh, deposits and this reflects in the stock uh, uh, So other work confirms what I just said. Uh, in banks with a digital platform, deposits go out faster and the cost increases more when uh, rates rise. For example, uh, 480 billion state funds. Uh, the easy deposit growth uh, more for digital banks than for non digital banks, both for uh, types of deposits. Uh, digital banks with higher internet usage have more pronounced deposit outflows. Uh, digital banking is more the deposit remuneration when the when the debt increases rates, and also some estimates of the deposit franchise value, which is this has to be taken with a grain of salt, are quite lower for digital banking, particularly those that uh, have a growth rate relative to banks with a digital. Okay, so this is just an example of that. Deposit losses at banks with digitalization for the digital ones is larger than for the non digital ones after the crisis. After the crisis. Okay, so what's the US response? Uh, here, uh, one question is whether uh, the, uh, this bank was a canary in the mine, in the sense that uh, 
that there was uh, other banks uh, seeing uh, potentially problem. The answer is yes, the Citro Bank uh, with, with the same weaknesses, although this was particularly weak that it contained. The runs are triggered by losses in the bond portfolio. Uh, there are undiversified finances and liabilities concentrated on large and deposits. Was over investment in long term securities uh, with no appropriate tax. They mismanaged interest rates and risk. In fact, they had no uh, cheap stocks uh, for a while. Uh, they did. Uh, in the government, the board of directors was unqualified, so was in quote, very diverse, was unqualified. Um, and they relaxed also from the regulatory point of view, prudential requirements and stress tests uh, on the impact, uh, on the lobbying of different banks. Uh, supervisor was a little bit if at the wheel. And then at the end of the uh, day, if we look at the losses in value of US banks, the total market losses, this is quite uh, important. Okay, so this is uh, more than uh, estimated uh, trillion uh, loss because of, uh, of the market losses, particularly uh, in the bond portfolio. So it means it is not only a potential problem, but it's really a good thing. Single to bank, and uh, very important to go over different cases. Uh, another bank that may be weak. No, uh, if we look at the equity asset ratio for US banks, mark to market, the red is previous to the crisis, uh, the black uh, is after the crisis, and this is SPD. Uh, uh, you also need to see that here it was standard in the positive, if you want. Uh, and here, uh, there is quite a bit of banks which are uh, in the red, uh, in the sense no, uh, that they have uh, mass to market uh, losses, important mass to market uh, losses. Um, uh, uh, this doesn't mean they are going to take it, okay, because they are mass to market, but still, it's a lot of money. The US response uh, was to do the systemic uh, exception. And the bank uh, funding program, as I uh, mentioned uh, before, and then the debate is how to uh, revise regulation and supervision, and uh, and whether to um, uh, to reform deposit uh, insurance. Okay, um, the four takeaways of the review of the Fed are that uh, well. Silicon Valley is both of the record and the management failed to manage the risk. Supervisors did not fully appreciate the extent of the vulnerabilities. When supervisors identify the vulnerabilities, they do not take the sufficient steps fast enough. And then also the regulatory uh, problem that certain medium sized banks uh, had relaxed regu regulatory uh, uh, requirements because of a, of a change in uh, cost uh, dot plan on the economy. Okay, uh, let, let, let me just go over the, uh, the evolution of the insured deposits. And on deposit insurance, um, uh, just one remark, uh, and then I'll, I'll tell you what you are thinking about. Um, well, deposit insurance, as we know, fosters more of hazard and staking, makes banks more aggressive. Um, However, if you have fair and risk-based premium, banks then have reduced incentives to the aggressive investment trade. But in practice, premium, deposit into premiums are insufficiently risk-based and procyclical, and in fact are punitive for some institutions. That's to say, the survivors of the crisis pay the bill and help your bank subsidize risky ones. So this is not a very good uh, example. So let, let me just uh, show to you uh, in the US. Um, the assessment rate is what the banks pay for deposit premiums, uh, and this is the what happened to the deposit insurance fund. As you see, in crisis, when you have a crisis, the deposit insurance fund, okay, is depleted, right? Uh, and, and then if you have um, uh, a problem, but then uh, the assessment, so as to say, uh, the charges uh, are to the bank survive, because this is completely. Um, this is completely uh, uh, the, the deposit insurance uh, structure in the US, uh, in the report of the uh, Federal Deposit Corporation, uh, thinks okay, what could we do to improve it? We could limit the coverage, we could unlimit it, and it's considered options, or 
targeted coverage, which basically they are thinking of protecting more the business paying on account. Okay, this is a good idea or not, this should be good. Okay. Um, I will uh, uh, just speak what, what happened to David Swiss. Maybe we can uh, discuss it a uh, bit more on, uh, because I just want to draw uh, the lesson. So, the evolution in Europe, so just to have a, 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 a note, uh, are we in trouble? Uh, do, do, do we have potential trouble for the banks in Europe? So, this, this is the evolution according to the uh, European Banking Authority. I don't know if uh, Jose Manuel uh, told you anything about that, but that's their data. Uh, the evolution of gross and net unrealized uh, losses on debt security has a number of high scores by uh, new banks. Uh, and you see that both net and gross are, uh, they have uh, both uh, negative, so there are more losses. But if you compare this with the capitalization of the banks, um, both, I think, the European Bank Authority and the European Central Bank are not uh, particularly uh, worried, although in some cases, you know, uh, this may uh, require uh, more risk. Okay, so let me end uh, before opening the floor for uh, questions and comments um, for lessons for regulation and supervision. Uh, or some lessons of the demise of Silicon Valley, the importance of diversification in both asset and liability sides of the balance sheet for a bank, the importance of government, risk management, and supervision in general with uh, single failures. Uh, the lesson of uh, the danger of relaxing prudential requirements for medium sized institutions, because the problem is that there are quite a few and typically use correlated strategies. So many medium or small ones make big ones, make big effects. Uh, the need to price uh, insurance properly, uh, taking into account also the moral hazard and also uh, in terms of the level of blood resource. Um, and then just a, 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 a side remark is that if you under-regulate medium-sized entities, they get into trouble, this will lead to more concentration. That's exactly uh, what has happened in the US and in general, uh, what banking system is that. Uh, I have not talked about great switch, but let me just uh, draw some uh, uh, some lessons. Uh, the interesting thing about the switch is, to, is, is that it was sound from a regulatory perspective. Capital and liquidity requirements were amply fulfilled. But was not the big of collapse, again, for rumors and documents. But the concern was about the business model, the profitability, and many governance problems that the bank had over the last uh, years. You know, executive misconduct, the regulatory problem, some lost big losses, and the was key. And then also, the, uh, what Terry Swiss uh, made or think about. So about many resolutions for the global uh, system of banks uh, makes us think about the, um, the single point of entry resolution versus multiple point of entry uh, resolution. So that, for example, sometimes capital uh, uh, with the net loss is subsidiary, uh, 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 it may be a problem. The issue of funding resolution, basically liquidity resolution. Uh, the 81 conversion debate, which I have not touched, which I not talk about that. Uh, whether a bank like Credit uh, Suisse could be resolved again, the, the authority, the big authority, not talk about it, but they said no. And obviously, now the issue whether UBS is too big to say. Uh, lessons from uh, general lessons now from the recent bank, uh, recent bank from Wales. The stability of the system is a public backdrop, and very good for this. We do that, nothing new, but we just say it again. Um, there is the issue of whether we should increase the uh, insurance coverage for deposits of business accounts or, uh, or not, or how, or maybe it could be treated like money market fund. Uh, we should price insurance, uh, eliminate cyclicality, and uh, increase the risk based um, component of deposit premiums. Maybe an idea is to um, to increase the preposition of central bank collateral for banks with certain characteristics, like higher deposit concentration or non-insured interest rates and customers. So there is a type of 
of uh, price insurance because then those will be held and the, um, the reposition of collateral as well. And finally, uh, some liquidity uh, regulation remarks. The liquidity uh, the ratio of the LCR could be adapted, so this is the more rigid now. Doesn't look uh, much out of place given what we've seen. Uh, maybe we should think uh, of putting sand or bombs in the street of the bottom of the draw. Maybe that, maybe it's new pricing, like the monomatic uh, fund or the mutual fund. Uh, in any case, the central bank is continuous monitoring uh, the intercontinental volume of social media and of the bank liquidity positions. No? Here, if the debt will be uh, retail uh, central bank digital currency is introduced, which we see, this may help in the sense that the central bank may then we have immediately the signal that something is going uh, on if, uh, if people start just uh, putting money into the central bank in the currency. But obviously, as we know, this may often tie is wrong uh, to say. And in any case, and this is uh, again not new, but very important is that you have to have a holistic approach to regulation and supervision. And, and in particular, now the, uh, the crisis uh, has got on the the negative some terrible regulation, but also uh, quite a few uh, terrible there are instruments. The European Union, just a reminder, because basically these things like things that uh, we say, I think, systematically, you know, the banking union is to be completed. We need a uh, real backstop of the single regulation fund. We need common uh, quality insurance, basically, just. Uh, we know this, uh, to repeat it. And also, uh, there are loose ends uh, in resolution. Uh, I think this is being discussed uh, already now, as you know, the public interest assessment, how to define it, uh, how to prevent loopholes you know, in the national liquidation options or in the precautionary capitalization, like the Italian example. Uh, so, uh, we have to uh, provide appropriate liquidity resolution. Uh, and this is still, uh, and it's linked also to the backstop, obviously. Um, uh, this is uh, still not fully uh, resolved. Potential ideas, uh, uh, and given what we have seen uh, recently, is that maybe you want to implement the MREL sufficient so that the 8% daily pool uh, does not affect short term deposits, even if we are not in short term. So and there are you know, different banks that still do not. Uh, this, um, this one. Okay, there are some reference which you can look at the, the bank in the course, and then so for a more comprehensive uh, treatment, you can look at uh, my competition authority in banking book, uh, in, in which I, I, I have quite a bit of the theory uh, and in case uh, of banking stability for the integration. So, thank you very much. And so, uh, if you have time, you can. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Xavier. Thank you very much for this very interesting and detailed also reconstruction of the events uh, and the, the drivers of the events. I think it, it complements very well um, parts of the discussions that, that we had um, yesterday. Let me abuse uh, my position and to, to ask a, a couple of, of, of questions. So, um, what happened to uh, Silicon Valley Bank um, and what happened to, to Credit Suisse? It was, uh, the distance was just a few days, distance in times was just a few days, but it looks like these are quite different cases. So one question is, is just uh, some spurious contagion, I don't know whether we can call it spurious contagion. So in fact, just two events uh, which happened uh, um, um, very close to, to each other. The second thing, if I understood correctly in practice, uh, the, the losses uh, um, in the bond portfolio was somehow the trigger um, 
in the case of, of, of Silicon Valley Bank. Then, I mean, of course, the structure of the deposits uh, and uh, the kind of depositor um, uh, made a big difference. But my question would be, is it the case uh, that uh, um, monetary policy stance uh, is more impactful uh, on uh, uh, banks which, for instance, have uh, uh, digital platforms or, in general, uh, digital banks? And then, second point um, is about um, EDIS. So, no, it's a, uh, more than a decade that we are discussing uh, EDIS, and uh, what we got also yesterday is that the political willingness uh, to uh, actually close the complete the banking union is missing. Um, but also, one of the points that it was uh, um, uh, mentioned yesterday is that uh, it is a fact that national deposit insurance schemes are, are in many cases uh, underfunded, not fully funded, funded and some, some cases even underfunded. So can we really think of uh, expanding the, the coverage also to, to SMEs uh, in a credible way? You clearly said we need to have credible uh, deposit insurance because otherwise it may lead to a perverse effect if I understood your, your argument. Um, and then this, this, the second point, can, can we really devise a, um, a system that is politically acceptable? Um, I don't know whether reinsurance is, is actually something that is, uh, um, uh, is feasible. Thank you. And then maybe we can uh, also, sorry, <laughs> I really monopolized a, a bit of the, the, the situation, but if you, if there are other questions, maybe in well, the... Um, um, maybe I should, because Please. there are quite a few, so otherwise we'll comment. Please. <laughs> Please. Uh, so quickly, uh, let me uh, go to your, um, uh, to your interesting question. So yes, um, the US crisis and credit Suisse are quite different. And the, the the, although there is a connection, I would say uh, that the question in both parts, as we did uh, and very true, is at the bottom is the business model of the bank. Okay, and in this sense, both were problematic for different reasons. Okay, and so this is kind of an underlying question, uh, but it's true. Uh, that is, uh, the cases are quite different, and that if uh, the, um, uh, the the U.S. banking crisis would not have happened, uh, Credit Suisse would have got any trouble, possibly, but later. Okay, uh, so yeah. Uh, second, uh, yes, the uh, the losses of the portfolio, you know, are the trigger, and then the public signal of the of the bank store, and yes, the uh, uh, what well, it seems that monetary policy um, is transmitted to one uh, what would be to to digital uh, to digital bank, you know, and uh, because they they respond uh, more as as it seems, uh, you no, know, uh, for example, you no know, deposit rates uh, respond more uh, to the changes in the base rate. Uh, than uh, in, in another bank, you know, and, and I, for example, you know, the region I think is clear, so uh, you have a bank which is digital, you know, that if you not uh, remunerate more the deposit, this will go for you, okay, and if you are in a bank with branches where, where people are more, more traditional you know, and so on, so uh, you think you know, they will take more that, so I think yeah. Um, then, on the, what can we say about the, Common deposit insurance. Uh, I, I think the restriction uh, is very fundamental. And, and why not happens is because of, of, of an extremely fundamental reason is the lack of a fiscal union in the in, in Europe. So, that's it. so, so and the idea, I think, that there can be a full common uh, deposit insurance without a much higher degree of fiscal union. Uh, no, uh, I think that's why it's not going to happen because it, it's basically recognizing that we need a much higher degree of fiscal union. I think because no other way it has been, uh, and I think that's a political uh, option. You know. um, now, uh, it's true that the important ones are, are, they are typically uh, underfunded, and in fact, they are underfunded, there is a crisis, and then you charge you know, the, the bank that remains. Okay. So, uh, this is, uh, 
was written in the U.S., but uh, it's happened everywhere. Uh, and then the issue of whether we should extend coverage to kind of deal with I think it's very it's controversial. Um, I am not sure it's a good idea. Uh, I, I'm all about this because of credibility uh, of the of uh, uh, no, uh, number one credibility, and also because maybe there could be other ways, uh, like thinking maybe uh, they could be treated as a money market fund, okay, uh, which the, the firm understands also that it has uh, some may have some fluctuation. Still. I, I would say it's an open question. We need more discussion. Uh, so there are problems for Thank you very much. There is Rim, please. Uh, thank you very much, Xavi, for this very uh, comprehensive presentation. I have one question. Yesterday we had. Uh, a long day of discussions on um, the regulatory framework, the Basel regulatory framework, whether it is in, I mean, of course, it is there, all written um, as a global standard, but then the implementation has not really followed. Uh, for example, in the European Union, it's uh, deemed, I, I think it's clear, not compliant uh, to the international standard. So, in your view, do you think uh, the current Basel agreement at least the one that has been uh, agreed or pre-agreed in the European Union is the right answer for prevention of uh, banking crisis? Sorry, uh, uh, could you be specific uh, 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 what agreement are you talking about? Uh, the Basel Agreement. Basel. Uh, Basel yeah. Three Agreement. Basel. The Basel the Agreement. Ah, joint implementation of Basel. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, 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 here, yeah, I mean, Obviously, there is, I think, the, um, the industry <laughs> that wants to write to go down, and so, so this will be very onerous, you know, the, uh, uh, both uh, on the US the same, huh? uh, that uh, it will be very costly, it will be, you know, reduce credit, etc. Uh, and then, well, some parties that say no, that this should be uh, uh, implemented. So my, my view is that I think it's good that it's implemented as a start, you know. Um, but the idea that uh, we will solve the instability and, uh, and the banking problems with capital only with capital and security requirement is wrong. That to say, it's not enough. So this is fine, but we can create tools to fulfill all the capital and liquidity requirement. Um, but not, not by a little, but by the bit, right? So what happened? Uh, so this means this is more, if you want, a failure, I would say, of uh, supervision and governance, right? So. Uh, so I see rather that apart from the apart from this type of regulation, that the whole uh, I, I see basically is more uh, for example in the US and even the medium side institution, you know, that this should be revised. But apart from that, the, I see that the emphasis probably uh, should be put more on, on supervision and and governance. Okay. Uh, and the qualification of the board. So still, I think there are many books which are not not, not welcome, unlike the SDG. So the SDG said we have a very big world, very you no know, very diverse. It, it ticked many boxes, except the one on expertise on market. Okay, maybe there was one. It seems there was one that that had some experience. So so this obviously uh, does not uh, okay. So this was it. Uh, thank you, Chavi. But one question on um, on the governance and the qualification of the board members. Who is going to um, certify the quality of the board members and their capability really to manage a systemic bank? Well, uh, in the the way it, no, in, uh, this is done by the no by the supervisory mechanism in uh, no in the in the ECB in, in, in Europe. This is done. But probably 
I would say it should be strengthened. Um, and one thing maybe that should be considered is that um, when there is an opening uh, on a ball on that it has to be played, there should be an open call. And this should be transparent. Okay. So uh, because otherwise uh, there is a kind of you do want a close link between the the companies that advise boards, right? So these consultants know that advise boards on the same board, and and probably they may be too, no? They, I mean, uh, maybe not enough there, no? Goes maybe one there, no? So maybe this would help, okay? Uh, and then obviously, so uh, if the supervisor sees that the board is completely unbalanced, that there are very uh, few people that know about me. I mean, he has to say it, okay? So this board uh, is not uh, is not appropriate, no? It does not mean that 100% have to be banking experts, eh? but, but it has to be, there has to be sufficient, uh, sufficient people knowing what is the bank and, and how banks operate and, and, and what of the intricacies of banking is there, okay? okay. Thank you, Chavi. Any more questions for uh, Chavi? Yes, Alessandro. So, yeah, thank you very much for the very interesting keynote. Um, Alessandro Scobellidi from Calvular. I would have uh, one question actually related to the point that you were making about uh, strategic complementarities of action from the side of the investors and also possibly on the side of the banks. And also the point that you mentioned about the too many to fail and correlated strategies. And I wanted to link also this with the point that you made about uh, MRL, TILAC, and in general the need for, for banks to make sure that they um, feel this shortfall in terms of MRL shortfall. Uh, what happened in, in, in some cases, at least based on some recent evidence, is that following the issuance of these uh, bank bailinable instruments, then some of these instruments, or a large part of these instruments, were actually held by banks in a context where, for instance, other type of investors like households who traditionally were also present as an uh, investor in, uh, let's say, in bank bonds, banks to some extent stepped in, which is to some extent understandable in a context of a sort of skin in the game mechanism. But uh, my question is uh, whether to what extent you think uh, also in light of the consideration you were making before in terms of strategic complementarities to make too many to fail correlated strategies, to what extent this cross holdings of bank bonds, particularly of bailinable bank bonds, may create some potential risk for financial stability and to some extent even endanger the actual possibility to implement resolution. Think about uh, what happened about Deutsche Bank when at, at the point when uh, there was the concern that Deutsche Bank was heavily exposed to the 81 instruments issued by Great Swiss. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, it's true that uh, uh, I guess that it would be better uh, if those bonds were held on a more diversified base. Okay, so I don't have the numbers uh, in, now here in mind. Uh, of the concentration, no? um, uh, and perhaps one could think uh, um, of, uh, of ways uh, to introduce this diversification, okay, this further uh, diversification, and I think uh, this would make uh, sense, no, um, so that um, uh, in particular we do not. Uh, Get into another doom loop, no? You have already the doom loop between you know, the, the, state, the government bonds, you know, sovereign bonds and banks, you know, uh, another loop within, uh, within the system. So I agree with you that the more diversification would be good. Thank you very much, uh, Xavi, for this uh, contribution to our conference and hope to see you in face to face some other time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to you. Okay, so same And have okay. a great day. Uh, you can okay. join us. Thank also. You very much. Thank you.
Bye. 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 Bye.